and now, Six Sports presents the Dean Trailways Fifth Quarter. Uh, with the new landscape of college football, Friday nights are no longer just reserved for high school football as Michigan State kicked off with number six Oregon just after nine o'clock tonight. Thanks as always for tuning in to the Dean Trailways fifth quarter. I'm Ian Kress. And I'm Haley Schongart. We'll get into our high school football highlights, no worries. But first, <laughs> here's what's happening with Michigan State's football team. Yeah, halftime was just moments ago. Oregon was leading 21 nothing. Both teams did turn the ball over on their first drives of the game. And for MSU sophomore quarterback, Aiden Childs. He was nine for nine with 87 yards passing, but self-inflicted wounds are once again an issue for the Spartans. 32 penalty yards. Last time we checked in, it was 21 nothing Ducks. The second half had just started, so we'll try to keep you updated as the show goes on. Well, on to our high school football teams. Fowler and Puama Westphalia are the cream of the crop uh -huh. in the CMAC year in and year out this year. No different. No different. It's why their <laughs> clash is our big game. The Pirates and the Eagles were both unbeaten and have been dominating <laughs> opponents. In fact, both teams have posted three shutouts in a row coming Ooh, into play tonight. Pretty good. Now this was what both teams were after. At halftime, Fowler had a four-point lead with less than three minutes in the third. Eagles quarterback Jacob Hoffman winds up and somehow Nate Spicer hauls it in an unreal grab. Fowler extends its lead to 11. The Pirates would find a response with 33 seconds left in the third. PW quarterback Ty Thalen finds the end zone from one yard out. PW would also get the two point conversion. We got a three point ball game, people jumping with 130 left to go in the game. PW with no timeouts and Fowler on fourth down. The Eagles hero from two years ago <laughs> would play hero once more. Ben Cohagen seals it. Fowler wins 14 11 the final. You can see the excitement right there on Fowler head coach John Spicer's face. This was an emotional win for him. To beat a, beat a football team like that, that's so well coached and made some great adjustments and our kids kept battling. And I tell you what, all the credit goes to our kids. They just fought and fought and fought, you know, and we had to, we had to adjust on the fly and these kids are pretty, pretty smart and they got a lot of moxie. They, uh, they made the adjustments. I mean, they're a great team. We're a great team. We knew we were going to come out and compete. We wanted to just execute and Bears put a ton of time in for us, like a ton. And we just wanted to get it for him. We wanted to get it for everyone, the fans, our players, everyone. The Milk Jug Trophy might be yeah. the best trophy we have in this area. That's Arguably sure. the most unique. Yes, Very absolutely. fitting for the school too. Yes. I love it. <laughs> well, the battle between the Pirates and Eagles wasn't the only area matchup with potential conference championship implications. In St. John's, the Red Wings and Mason Bulldogs were both 3-0 in league play coming into tonight's clash. Our Tyler Driesinga was on the sidelines and joins us now with more on the battle for first place. Yeah, guys, the winner tonight would claim at least a share of the conference title and could win it outright with a win next week. Mason has won at least a share five years in a row, but St. John's came into this one 5-0 for the first time since 2014. Mason led 20-10 at halftime. We pick up the action in the third quarter. Goal to go for the Bulldogs. Quarterback Kaysen Carswell fakes the handoff and takes it in himself. He had a big game rushing for that TD and passing for 191 yards and four touchdowns. Here's one of them. Carswell hits Wyatt Ball on a screen. He does the rest, getting some great blocks and weaving his way to the end zone. 34 to 10 Bulldogs. Ball had a big game too, late in the game. He's lined up at quarterback this time. He keeps it and again showcases his speed, breaking free for his third touchdown of the game. Mason tops St. John's 40 to 10 securing at least a share of the CAAC Red for a sixth straight year. And after the game, Ball gave all the credit for his touchdowns to the boys up front. Really, it was just all blocking. I, I trust the blocks, and I just follow. Um, the coaches really like me in space, so I just try to work my magic, I guess. The bottom line is this is the youngest team we've ever had here at Mason, and the amount of growth that has come from since week one has just been phenomenal. I can't be prouder of these guys. I, I've just seen so much growth from week one to now. We're a completely different team, and uh, I'm really excited about the future with these guys. 
Staying in the CAAC Red, Williamson welcomed in Hazlitt as the Hornets were looking for their second win of the season. They led by one at halftime and had the ball to start the second half, but Williamson's going to turn it over on the first play of the half. Dontrell Dennis, right place, right time, on the deflection, comes up with the interception, and that would set up a rushing touchdown from standout junior running back Corey Amakri as he's going to give Hazlitt the lead. A little bit later in the third quarter, Hornets try to get tricky with it on a flea flicker and ball hawk down. Dennis is there waiting for it when the ball comes down, his second interception of the half. And it would set up yet another touchdown for a mockery. His fourth of the game as Hazlitt goes up 28-14. So how would the Hornets respond? Well, on fourth down in the fourth quarter, Hornets go for it. And quarterback Caleb Nielsen is going to find a wide open Hunter Van Sickler downfield for a 70-yard touchdown. And just like that, we have a one-possession game. But a mockery was just too much to handle. The four-star running back is going to run in his fifth touchdown of the game, extending the lead late for Hazlitt. Corey's older brother, a.k.a. my guy Nakai, <laughs> had six touchdowns in the game last year for Hazlitt. So Corey will still have that number to chase in the years to come. But nonetheless, Hazlitt takes down Williamston tonight, 35-21. to well, it's time for us to take a break, but when we come back, East Lansing hit the road to play Davison, one of the top 10 teams in the state in Division One. And speaking of top 10 teams, the DeWitt Panthers are number three in the state in Division Three, as they continue to put up over 40 points every week. We'll see if they can stay unbeaten against Holt after the break. Look for the U.S. Army Fan Zone each week at the Six Sports Game of the Week. Try your skill at games, win great prizes, and more. What does it mean when people say America is a land of opportunity? It means the power to discover. To redefine yourself. To improve yourself. To challenge yourself. To realize there's more in you than you ever knew that you could do means giving people an open field to explore what they do best. With the best tools. The best training. The best technology in the world. We bring out the best in the people who serve. So you can be all you can be. Kamala Harris pushed the far left Green New Deal. That means huge new taxes, increased utility bills, and banning gas cars. That's why I am committed to passing a Green New Deal and finally putting an end to fracking once and for all. Mm-mm-mm. Mamala Kamala just don't give a frack. Kamala's fracking ban would kill jobs and raise gas prices. Kamala doesn't give a frack about you. Only President Trump will bring back Trump's strong economy. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. The Sundance store is a boy, a place to buy an automobile and get the payments a lot less, hopefully here, because the prices are less. And we've got all kinds of automobiles. we got certified, brand new, and over a 1,000 used cars. If you come down here and find a car that you like, we're going to sell your kids up on a horse. I'll tell you what, it's one moment that they just won't forget. They'll love it and they'll always remember it. And buying a car here at Sundance will be good for your family, good for your billfold, and good for us at Sundance. Dishonest Daniel Mahoney was caught lying to police about possession of illegal drugs. Now he's lying to voters, trying to talk tough on crime. Truth is, he's a defund the police radical. In fact, Jackson has become one of the most dangerous cities in Michigan under Mahoney's leadership. We don't need another defund, dangerous, dishonest politician in Lansing. We don't need Daniel Mahoney. All concrete is not the same. Make sure you are getting a mix that is made for all the seasons in Michigan before your contractor completes the job. Have questions? Talk to us. We can help. Go to consumersconcrete.com. In Congress, you got to be vigilant about cutting wasteful spending. I'm Alyssa Slotkin. That's why I fought to claw back almost $30 billion in unspent COVID funds, took on my own party to go after pork at the Pentagon, and voted to block taxpayer dollars from going to China. I approve this message, and I'll stand up to anyone, Democrat or Republican, because it's not their money, it's yours. Alyssa Slotkin for Senate. End of year is coming with insurance deductibles resetting in January. Now is the perfect time to schedule an appointment with Advanced Audiology. Let us provide you with a customized hearing solution today. Hearing starts here at Advanced Audiology. 
Welcome back. Lansing Everett found itself in unfamiliar territory tonight, looking to bounce back from a loss. After a 4-0 start, the Vikings fell at Grand Blank last week. Tonight, they were back home, where they boast a 6-1 record over the last two seasons to face Grand Ledge. The Vikings came out and set the tone early tonight, and I mean really early. How about the opening kickoff? Eugene Moore is back deep for Everett. And a big hole opens up right in front of him with good blocking. He bursts through for a huge return, taking it out to the sideline. Finally brought down in Grand Ledge territory. The Vikings made sure to take advantage of that excellent field position. Quarterback Najee Davidson rolls to his right and fires it downfield. Saginaw Valley State commit Mason Chadwell hauls it in, walks into the end zone. Everett up 7-0. Later, that Davidson to Chadwell connection makes another appearance for another Everett touchdown. The Vikings go on to top Grand Ledge 35 to 12, their first win over the Comets since 2019. Over at DeWitt, the unbeaten Panthers hosting Holt. We always talk about the Panther offense and for good reason, but let's show the defense some love. First quarter, DeWitt's Gavin Dussault gets home for the sack to force a Holt punt. Ensuing drive. DeWitt quarterback Elliot Larner swings it out to running back Trav Moore and his blockers pave the path to pay dirt. DeWitt already up 22 nothing. First play of the second quarter. Larner buys time and then lofts a perfect ball to his brother Abram Larner in the back of the end zone. That pass put Elliott over 1,000 passing yards this season. He also went over 1,000 rushing yards for the season tonight. And we've still got three weeks of the regular season to go. DeWitt posts a 64-0 shutout to stay unbeaten. Whew, yeah, he is having quite this season. Well, East Lansing was on the road taking on Davison, and the Trojans would start fast in this one. Quarterback Ben Fletcher throws it deep down the sideline, and what a grab from J.L. Branson. Later in the drive, Duarte Sams Jr. is going to rip off a 38-yard touchdown run to put the Trojans up seven with five minutes to play in the first quarter. But it was all Davison from there. A.J. Hill would tie the game at seven thanks to an eight-yard rushing score. And a little bit later, the Cardinals are going to set up the screen game and it's Hill who's going to weave his way through the Trojan defense for another six points. East Lansing falls on the road 35-10 to and will be on the road next week to take on Lansing Everett. And our last CAAC Blue matchup of the night was Waverly and Okemos as both were looking for their first conference win of the season. The Wolves started this game with an over eight minute drive and it doesn't result in any points because Waverly's Malik Embry gets the interception in the end zone. How about that play? Then the Okemos defense is going to make a play. The Warriors are going to go for it on fourth down near the goal line and a pack of Wolves is there to make the stop as they get the ball back on offense. Then with under a minute to go until halftime, Okemos was looking for the first score of the game and take a wild guess who's going to force the turnover for the Warriors near the goal line. Embry is there for his second INT of the half. This was a 0-0 game at halftime and Waverly went on to win 25-18 in the final moments as it's the first win of the season for the Warriors. Well, shifting to the CAAC white now, everybody is chasing undefeated Portland after five weeks as the Raiders have been lighting up the scoreboard in recent weeks. To say the least, <laughs> behind a dominant rushing attack, might we add, the Raiders have scored 35 Ooh. or more points in three straight games. That's pretty good. Tonight they welcomed an Eaton Rapids and would make a living in the end zone once again. The ball is going to be fumbled and Christopher Batley is going to jump on it in the end zone to make it 14-0 Portland in the the first quarter. The Raiders would then force a punt and this time it is going to land in the hands of Brady Rowe as he is going to take it as he's going to receive the punt here and then he's going to turn the key like he's starting a car and drive straight to the end zone once he fields the kick. A burst of steam. It's another Portland touchdown making it 21 nothing early in the first quarter. And it's going to be the standout running back, Caden Dickerson, doing what he does best, running straight through that defense, a 40-yard touchdown run as Portland rolls to a 64-0 win over Eaton Rapids, improving to 6-0 on the season. Moving right along, Lansing Sexton took the trek into Ionia's house. J-Dub's Dequarius Jones made himself real comfortable and fast. Seven minutes into the first, the big man dives into the end zone 
Sexton gets on the board 6-0. Still in the first, Jones whips out a Tom Izzo special, turning some defense <laughs> into offense. How about a little scoop and score action for your Friday night? Ionia would actually storm back and take this one at 21 to 20, the final. <laughs> well, we got to take one more final break, but on the other side, we're going to be talking your favorite sport. Woohoo! Hockey season is upon us. Who's excited? <laughs> oh, I <yeah>. am. <laughs> the Michigan State Spartans opened up a new season on the road against Lake Superior State. And with hockey season starting, basketball isn't too far behind. That's Ian's favorite sport. Michigan State Madness returned to the Breslin Center tonight. See how Coach Tom Izzo and company got the students ready to roll when we come back. I like. The Dean Trailways fifth quarter is sponsored by Dean Trailways of Michigan. Call it a sense of purpose, a higher calling. At Dean Transportation, we call it our passion. It's simply who we are. 60 years of pioneering the best health and safety standards because safe student transportation is essential. We are hardworking folks, connecting children to learning, schools to our communities, and you to a better career. Want to make mid-Michigan a better place? We'll put you in the driver's seat. Join the Dean family today and help to connect our kids to brighter futures. Finding quality local businesses that are valuable, well-reviewed, and have a respected identity can be challenging. Who do you trust? At MidMichigan'sBest.com, you can browse many business categories and discover trusted, well-respected companies. There, you'll find out how to contact them, learn more about what they do, what sets them apart from their competition, and much more. Before you leave anything to chance, visit MidMichigan'sBest.com and start your search for reliable local businesses. We pick up the phone because it's ringing. Hello, this is Sam. That's simple human sense. Ask the Al Bordeaux Agency in East Lansing if auto owners make sense for you. A lot of candidates are pretty full of themselves. Me, I'm just a regular guy. I coach my son's basketball team. I'm on my own lawn, and I like to drink beer and smoke meat. And regular people, well, we actually do our jobs. Cut middle class taxes and lower prescription drug costs. I work with Democrats and Republicans to get it done. And when Democrats got soft on the border, I called them out. If you want a job done right, I hear a regular guy. I'm Curtis Hertel, and I approve this message. Use Nation tomorrow. He narrowly survived an assassin's bullet. Now, former President Trump returns to Butler, Pennsylvania. Join me, Brian Enton, live for the historic moment. Watch The Plot to Kill Trump. Back to Butler tomorrow at 9 8 Central on News Nation. At News Nation, we march to the beat of our own drum. I'm talking about you independents. You're going to decide this election. America is thinking about it in a much different way. It's called News with respect for all Americans. News Nation. Disability Connections is thrilled to have Dr. Temple Grandin as keynote speaker during the inclusion event at the Michigan Theater in Jackson on October 30th. This prominent autistic author will share her unique perspective inside the narrative of autism. Call or click for more info. Welcome back to the Dean Trailways fifth quarter. Expectations are sky high for the Michigan State hockey team this year as the reigning Big Ten champions are ranked number four in the country and started the season on the road for the first time since 2019. Adam Nightingale's crew made the track to Sault Ste. Marie to play Lake Superior State. The former CCHA foes have a lot of shared history. This was the 128th all-time meeting. There are nine new faces on the Spartan roster this season. Six minutes to go in the first, MSU's Daniel Russell gets the turnover, throws one on, and Isaac Howard deflects it home. Lake Superior State would tie things up 1-1 at the end of the first, which is how things would stay through, through regulation. So, free hockey. Ooh. Four minutes left in the extra frame. This time, it's Howard who finds Russell. The goal is good. Michigan State with the season opening win in overtime, 2-1 the final. Ooh, what a win. And tonight at the Breslin Center, both Michigan State basketball programs hosted Michigan State Madness, which used to be known as Midnight Madness. And for the coolest moment of the night, it was this. Hi, everybody over at the Breslin Center. I am Steve Mariucci here in Los Angeles. You know, Coach Izzo, he and I are best friends. I want to be the first to inform you, Tom Izzo, that your jersey number 10 will be retired at Northern Michigan University Basketball. Now 
that is certainly a very cool moment. And That's you're cool. actually going to be at yeah, that exhibition I'm game. I'm excited. Super excited. <laughs> so we're Get ready for a long up. drive. There, <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. Thanks for tuning in as always. We'll see you next week.